brought to you by CFU, the power of service. More with you and I had track and field coach Dave Paulson. Coach, uh, on the women's short sprint side, you have uh, three, four kids that really compete in the 100, the 200, and the 400. You, you've built some depth, and you have a couple kids that have that ability to run a couple different races. Yeah, the, the women's sprints has been a, a, a nice development over the years, and so uh, Coach Smith has done a terrific job uh, developing them. I think we have five women under 12 seconds in the 100 meters, which, you know, six, seven years ago, we didn't have any that were even come close to breaking 12. And so to have uh, that group we were there at, and obviously they can move up or down from there, and so, uh, you know, you got them doubling back in the, in the 200, and then we have a nice long sprint crew too with three women that could uh, potentially make a final there. So uh, the depth is huge. You have to have the depth in case, you know, you just never know what's going to happen, especially when you're looking at filling out those sprint relays four by one, four by four, uh, the conference championships, you know, at the end of the day, the four by four last event over a three long day weekend. And it's uh, who's, who's, who's left standing sometimes at the end of that. When you have that depth, it gives you the opportunity to put a really good relay team out there uh, in case uh, it comes down to that. We have some upperclassmen in that women's group. Uh, you think of Voss, Wedeware, Sanda, Barrett, but then uh, Kirkhoff and Bennett you talked about in the longer sprints. On the men's side, some upperclassmen as well. Isaiah Trousel uh, in the short sprints. Didn't have any indoor eligibility for you, but placed third at the U.S. Indoor Championships and comes back for his final uh, season here this outdoors. Yeah, Isaiah's looking really strong. He, he won the Texas Relays early, earlier this year in late March uh, against a lot of really good runners from Power 5 schools. And so uh, ranked number one in the Valley in the one, ranked number two in the two. And uh, he's just getting stronger and stronger. And uh, he's a seasoned veteran whose experience is definitely gonna play big, big benefits for us. And we rely on him a lot for leadership uh, with that group. Because a lot of the other men's sprinters are pretty young or they're new to the program with transfers coming in. And so uh, really excited to see what that group's gonna do for us. In the 400, you have Ono Mitchell, Titus Jackson, uh, Deontay Dean, a couple guys that uh, building some depth in that 400 as well. For sure, and it's uh, just like the women's side, you have to have depth, and so we've uh, established some depth in the long sprints and the short sprints, and so again, when you're looking to put together the, the formula for success, anytime you got people that can go up and down and move them around, it's definitely a benefit to the program. We have a story coming up on UNI Panther Drake Hansen. Uh, he was the 800 meter champion uh, during the indoor season. And coach, uh, both the men's and women's side, you've got some big hitters in that 800 uh, meter event. Yeah, on the men's side, Drake, uh, you know, he finished runner up last year outdoors, was an indoor conference champion this year. Uh, real savvy racer, knows how to put himself in good position. Uh, Chase Canucky's right there, uh, ranked in the top eight on the men's side too, looking for him to have a big uh, impact for us. And then on the women's side, uh, Sophia Jungling is back from injury from indoors, looking good, had her first race just last weekend, and I'm excited to see how she can progress here the next couple weeks as we head down for the Missouri Valley Conference Championships. All right, that is coming up May 12th through the 15th. We will talk with Coach Paulson about that right after this. Right now, here's that story on Drake Hansen.